Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch and welcome to part 36, continuing to repair the damaged hull and making some hardwood seating mounts. In the last episode I showed how I opened up the crack all the way along the bottom of the hull and then I filled it with cyanoacrylate adhesive and now the cyanoacrylate adhesive has cured, it's time to sand it smooth. Before I start the repainting process, which is not really that far away, I will be sanding the entire hull to form a key for the new paint. The original red paint on this hull was put over the top of the creamy coloured paint and as I'm rubbing the red paint as you see at the moment the red coat is coming away from the cream coat a little too easily because it's not very well keyed. That's enough sanding for the moment, it's now time to fill the gap in the keel with some car body filler. In the top of the car body kit tin comes a plastic applicator and what I've done is rounded both ends of it, one to a slightly larger radius than the other because I do not want the car body filler to be at a perfect 90 degrees to the keel, I want it to smooth into the keel. And by shaping the applicator in this way, I can get a nice fillet of filler all the way down the keel, which will save some sanding time. This is very standard car body filler, it's a two part mix, the resin and a hardener, and here I'm mixing it. I never know how much hardener to use, but it's better to use more hardener than not enough, because if you don't use enough it doesn't set. It's quite cold in the workshop today, so it's not going to go off as quickly as it would if it was a very hot day. In this clip you can clearly see the principle of what I'm doing. The cyanoacrylate adhesive filled the gap all the way down the hull. During the curing process, the cyanoacrylate adhesive soaked into the wood of the hull at the bottom of the gap that I created. So it was a little bit concave. There was still a bit of a depression all the way down the hull. When I'm doing a job like this, I tend to get car body filler where I don't want it, like on the hull, but it's not a problem, it easily wipes off. And whilst it's still in the sort of flexible liquid state, it's easy to get it off with a little bit of cellulose thinners. But the use of cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinners, needs to be kept to a minimum because it may remove the paint, and I don't want to do that. In this clip, I'm cleaning up around the water inlet hole that's in the bottom of the hull. And thankfully the paint is remaining firmly stuck to the hull because it's very old and dry paint. After a short time, the body filler sets hard. And the next stage of the repair is to use some stuff called knifing putty or cellulose stopper. This comes in small tubes and it's a cellulose based filler. You may be asking, well why didn't I just use this on the entire gap down the hull? This cellulose stopper or putty is designed to be used as a skin over existing filler. If you fill a large gap with it, two things are going to happen. First of all, it's going to take a long time to set, and when it does set, it will probably crack. It's great stuff to use, and if you've been watching the video closely, you will see that I'm dipping my finger in a pot of something, and I'm dipping my finger in a pot of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinners. And what this does is it slightly dissolves the putty, and allows me to get a very smooth finish. I would really recommend using some rubber gloves if you're doing this. I don't. I am doing it wrong. Health and safety warning. Please try and resist the urge to dip your fingers into powerful solvents. Anyway, back to the job. So you can see what I'm doing here. As I mentioned earlier, it's most important not to apply this stuff too thickly. So I'm putting it on with my finger and then I'm using the cellulose thinners to dilute it and eventually I get a very thin skin all the way down the keel. The filler in this cellulose putty is very, very fine. It's much finer than the coarse stuff that they put into the body filler. It's slightly more difficult to sand as it's a good bit harder, and that's really why I use the cellulose thinners principle. When this putty is used in the automotive industry, it's quite easy to sand it and get a perfect feather edge down to the original paint but I'm not too sure on this because this original paint, as I said earlier, is not very well keyed to the coat underneath and I really do not want to go down the nitromose route and remove all of it. That would be very messy, very time consuming and completely unnecessary. So this video is a little bit boring and a coma may be impending, but I'm trying to show the principle in detail. As you can see, I go over the putty many times with my finger. And this not only smooths out the putty and makes it of a very even consistency all the way down the keel, it forces out the cellulose thinners. So by the time I've applied the putty, most of the cellulose thinners has evaporated. 
I've done jobs like this many, many times in my life. I used to build quite a lot of model aircraft. I've built those since I was a very small child. And of course, using filler in very small quantities to save on weight was essential. If I accidentally put too much cellulose thinners on the area, I quickly wipe it off with a cloth. This is the hole in the bottom where the water goes into the boiler feed pump. And I'm just making sure it's not blocked. In reality, this water inlet hole is a bit surplus to requirements, but I'm leaving it there because it will allow me to feed water into the pump and out of the side of the boat. The next step of the operation is very simple. I just sit on my chair in the workshop, drinking a cup of tea, watching the cellulose stopper set. In reality, this will take over 24 hours, so what I'm going to do is something completely different. If you've been watching all of this series, you will realise that the superstructure is removable in three pieces. And in two of the three pieces, there are seats. And this is one of the seats, this is the stern seat. But unfortunately, three of the supporting legs are actually missing. I'm going to use this one leg that I found in the bottom of the boat and duplicate it three times. I could machine some commercial dowel, but that wouldn't look good, it's not hardwood. These may be commercially available items, but I don't really have the time to troll through the internet looking for them, so I'm going to make my own. A while back, a very kind gentleman sent me some hardwood, and unfortunately, my computer screwed up, and I lost his address so I couldn't thank him for it, so I'll do it on here. Thank you very much indeed. It's proved to be very useful stuff. So I cut a piece of this excellent hardwood using my bandsaw, and then I fitted the almost square piece of hardwood, into the four-jaw self-centering chuck in the larger of my two lathes. And with the help of a micrometer and the original piece of wood, I turned this piece to the same diameter. To make this component, it's just a case of turning the handles at the correct ratio. Really, I should have put a centre in it and supported it, but it works fine. And it doesn't really matter if they're not exactly the same, because even though these stanchions were commercial items, I would think, at one time, they're not really all the same. So it doesn't really matter if they don't all come out exactly the same, although I'll try my best to get them as near as possible to the original one. Before I get much further and before people write in telling me about it, yes I know this bit is quite dangerous. I'm using a piece of very coarse sandpaper to clean up the work. And I'm very near the chuck, so I'm being especially careful not to stick my fingers in it. And also, a good health and safety warning, when working near a chuck like this, do not wear loose clothing. That could be dangerous. In my opinion, the secret of using emery cloth or sandpaper in the lathe is not to hold on to the sandpaper or emery cloth very tightly. That way, if the work grabs it, it just pulls it out of your hand. If you grip it tightly, it may pull your hand into the work. Anyway, at the end of all that, I managed to replace the three missing stanchions, and here they are. And they're near enough for rock and roll, and I still have at least seven of my fingers left. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.